Hello friends, it's Dave here from Save Decks. Now, show of hands, how many of you love dogs? Obviously I can't see you, but I'm assuming a fair chunk of you have thrust your hands skyward in enthusiasm. Well, today is your lucky day, as I am bringing you not just one, but two mini-reviews of games involving dogs. And being a postman, dogs are my natural enemy, so I hope you appreciate what I put myself through for you. We have a fair few games to review lined up, so make sure you hit that subscribe button to keep up to date with us as we continue along the road to 1000 subscribers, we're getting closer each and every day. So the two games in question are Ranger Dog, which recently launched on the Switch, and Arkan, the Dog Adventurer, which comes out next week. Both of these games were provided to us for review, so thank you very much to the publishers, and I am reviewing the Nintendo Switch version of each game. So let us start by taking a look at Ranger Dog. This is a side-scrolling shoot-em-up, or shmup as they are affectionately known. You start out by selecting your dog from a choice of three. I choose Marrow simply because it was the cutest, but all three dogs have different weaponry. You all start out with your basic small bullets with enemies flying around to destroy you. Occasionally a defeated foe will drop a power-up displayed on a card. This card could either give you a special weapon or ability. These can vary depending on what dog you choose. Maru, for example, can either have a very wild projectile, which I found the most useful, or the ability to shoot forwards and upwards at the same time. The other dogs can get things like the spread or being able to shoot both forwards and backwards. Other power-ups come in the form of bombs, which you can hold up to three. Activating one does a scream-filling blast to take out the nasties. You also get projectiles that you can drop below you as you fire your normal weapons. There is a speed up power, and also some smaller dogs you can receive that follow you around and shoot when you shoot. The power ups that are dropped are not randomised, in fact you can shoot the card before you collect it to make it change into another power up. Keep shooting it to make it scroll to your desired upgrade before scooping it up. If you were to collect a type of weapon that you already have in your possession, then it will level up and become bigger and stronger. You can do this up to level 3, after which collecting it again will grant you points. If you get hit, then you can lose a life and restart where you left off, but you will lose your current level of weapon and need to start from scratch. It does feel really rewarding to build up your character and range of attacks, like in a lot of these shoot 'em up games. And the game does get progressively harder as you go along. You are granted with some difficulty options from the get-go, and you can also select how many lives you have from 1 to 9, and you also get 9 credits that act as continues when you get game over, so you have plenty of chances to get through the game. Which is just as well, as the game can get very difficult as you go along, but in a good way. When playing the first level I found it to be quite slow and easy, but I'm glad it was as it allowed me to familiarise myself with how the game worked before it got more challenging. Each level has a spacey backdrop, but eventually transforms into something else. The first level being a sushi restaurant with conveyor belts transporting the food, food of which wants to kill you by the way. And one level has you dealing with these wooden planks, destroying the legs makes the planks fall and the power ups always appear underneath where you can't access them. That's annoying. There is also a boss fight to contend with at the end of each stage, and they aren't just simple avoid and shoot affairs either, you need to use your brain for some of them to work out how to attack them. Working them out isn't too much of a noodle scratcher though, especially when an arrow tells you where to attack, but it does provide some nice variety that I find these types of games need. I really like the pixel art style and the variety of level themes keeping things interesting, I like the little details such as the conveyor belts being operated by our little rodent chums here. And I really enjoy the music too, which is always in keeping with the theme of the levels, although I didn't get to hear much of it as it was constantly hidden under the shooting sound effects. Sometimes there could be too much going on screen as the game progressed, and with the different coloured backgrounds and plenty of enemies and coins in one stage I meant to collect, I would constantly die simply because I couldn't see the projectile that hit me. Too manic for its own good this one, but all round still great fun. It sells for £4.99 on the eShop and I feel this is a very good price for it. I don't play a whole lot of this genre as it can get a bit samey, but I enjoyed it for what it is. So Ranger Dog does come with my recommendation, so let's take a look at the second game. 
and this second game is called Arkan the Dog Adventurer. What is this game exactly? Best way I can describe it is Arkanoid on its side. You take control of Arkan, and just as I type the script I realise the reference in his name. Arkan is a dog, and you need to get through a whole bunch of levels to slay all of the monsters. And how do you do that? By whacking a ball, what else? So anyone who has played Arkanoid before knows that you need to bounce a ball around to destroy some blocks, and this is no different, except it is horizontal instead of vertical. You move and jump around to swing your weapon at the ball, the monsters will typically be hidden behind the blocks. You need to knock the ball into the blocks to break them to access those beasties behind. Unlike Arkanoid, it doesn't matter if you miss the ball, it just goes off screen, and another will appear in front of you. But what does matter is getting hit by the enemy's projectiles. Run out of health or fall down a hole and you start the level again. There are different types of blocks, each taking a different number of hits to break, same as the enemies, with different designs and attacks to avoid. If you are able to keep whacking that ball back in succession, then it gets faster and stronger and can destroy the blocks and monsters in less hits. You get rated on a 3 star system. These 3 stars will be scattered around the stage and they will need smashing to earn those stars. Make sure you get those before killing all the monsters, as the last monster killed ends the level. The second and third worlds are unlocked by earning enough stars. The levels get progressively harder as you would imagine, and there are a few things that can shake things up. One of the features is called Monster Rage. After you've killed a certain number of monsters on the level, Monster Rage activates and the enemies throw their projectiles faster at you. And you'll find other little differences in the gameplay as well, such as when I got to the second world, I was surprised to see these hands come out from the floor to grab me. I really enjoy the art style of this game, like with the first one there's a nice pixel art style, but I really like the backgrounds and the colours in this one as well. The music has a nice feel to it also. But, let's now talk about the controls. You use the left stick to move and the right stick to aim where you want the ball to go, and then you use the R button to give it a good whacking with your stick. That all works well and good and it feels very satisfying to build up momentum and see that ball power up. But then we get to the jumping. You press up to jump. Why are we pressing up to jump? The face buttons do nothing so why can't one of those be jump? I don't know why this choice was made, I mean the game is certainly playable enough still but, but I didn't feel like I had as much control as I would have liked. There's also this teleport move you can do with the L button, but honestly I just kept forgetting it was there. The game costs £4.49 and has a 20% pre-order discount. The game releases on the 30th of June. I honestly feel like this is a great price for it and it's a fun game overall. The only problem is how the jumping works, but it is by no means a deal breaker. It's not the longest of games, but for the price you're getting, it's a pretty decent experience. So there we go, our doggy duo discussion is at a close, and I honestly feel like both games are worth getting, especially at those prices. So I was very happy to receive both of these games for review. It's always a pleasure when they throw me a bone and give me games that are fun to play, obviously. So what do you guys think of these games? Let me know in those comments down below and make sure to hit that like and subscribe for more like this to come in the future. Thank you so much for watching everyone, see you in the next one.